Do, uh, do to- intro it as Toto. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Mercedes EQS, the most advanced electric vehicle on the field, maybe. Actually, we're a little slower than some of the other entries into the EV field, but we think that over time we will prove that we are worth uh, the victory. Thank you, Toto. We appreciate that. Uh, in this video, Toto and myself will explore uh, two very important questions. One, is the EQS the electric S-Class that Mercedes is, is positioning it as? And two, how does it rank in the six-figure uh, electric sedan uh, sphere s- world? Folks, today's video is brought to you by Karma. What is Karma, other than good vibes, well, get this. If you wanted to buy something for your car, say tires or brake pads or a set of coilovers, but you wanted to wait until it went on sale, or if it was out of stock and you didn't want to keep checking back to see when the site got it back in, Karma is perfect for you. Karma is a free browser extension for Chrome, and there's three main features. Number one, it automatically finds and applies the best coupon codes for you at checkout. That's just for your general online shopping needs. You can also plan and organize your shopping by making shopping lists from up to 50,000 stores with real-time pricing updates on items you've saved, and then you can choose how big and how frequent those notifications are for the items that are on your lists. Uh, Third, you can earn cash back. So car Karma will actually pay you in your PayPal account to buy items and shop at their approved stores. And lastly, you can select notifications for if an out-of-stock item goes back into inventory so you don't miss out the second time around. It's great. Online shopping has taken over our lives. I know I am guilty of it as well, but it does make my life more convenient because I'm always on the road. I don't have time to go to stores anymore, and I want to know when stuff's on sale. I don't want to waste money. So get on this bandwagon now. Hit the link in the video description. Download the Karma free browser extension for Chrome. And thanks to Karma for sponsoring today's video. Guten Morgen. Welcome in to the canyons. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Mercedes. Mercedes. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Toto. <laughs> do, uh, do, intro it as Toto. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Mercedes EQS, the most advanced electric vehicle on the field, maybe. Actually, we're a little slower than some of the other entries into the EV field, but we think that over time we will prove that we are worth uh, the victory. Thank you, Toto. We appreciate that. Welcome to the Canyons. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> oh, you only break that out in really clutch <laughs> moments. Today it's the Mercedes we EQ. Just, I, just, I just want to point out that Red Bull does not currently make an electric vehicle or True. an electric sedan. So True, they we don't. Are, we are winning that particular race. I'm actually race. crying a little bit. That's very funny. <laughs> the EQ has 580. Uh, in this video, Toto and myself will explore uh, two very important questions. One, is the EQS the electric S-Class that Mercedes is, is positioning it as? And two, how does it rank in the six-figure uh, electric sedan uh, sphere s- world? The the competition, the the, the world constructors <laughs> in, championship. In, in, where does it place in the field? In the constructors championship, right? This is the uh, the high end one. It's not quite as expensive as it could be because it lacks the executive rear seat you know, chauffeur dealio, and we'll explain why that might be for the best in a minute. But the EQS 584 Matic, you break that down, meaning it's the big motor with the, it's the big dual motor, all wheel drive one, 516 horsepower, all wheel drive, 631 pound feet of torque with 5,822 pounds of curb weight it's big. to hustle around. It has a uh, 107.8 kilowatt hour battery, both the small, small 450, and the big have the uh, the same size battery, and the EPA rating is 340 miles. Although, if you believe the dash uh, ticker, it might be more like 380. I haven't pushed the range of it, 
but I've found that um, it ticks off miles at roughly the same Slower rate. Uh, the same rate that you are going miles. So. And the, the two wheel drive model, the, the EPA range is three fifty, right? It's it's yeah. so same battery pack. You get a little bit more range because it's right. less motor. Right. Yeah. Uh, all of them get adaptive air suspension, and all of them get standard rear steer. Mm -hmm. A little bit of mixed uh, mixed information. Some uh, outlets were saying that there's an optional 10 degrees. 10 degrees, and then it comes with four and a half. But when I went to the Mercedes configurator, all the different trim levels said 10 degrees of rear right. steer. So This one on the Monroney does say 10 degrees of rear steer, and uh, it is excellent in parking lots. The turning radius of this car feels very tight. Um, it has the optional hyper screen. Hyper screen. Hyper screen which is a 56 inch glass panel that has three LCD screens in it. A big one in the middle, uh, one for the passenger that's a full on touch screen with lots of actual functionality. You can yeah, do absolutely. most things as a passenger. And then the one uh, gauge cluster. Um, it's got a fingerprint scanner for your driver profiles. Yeah, right here. Right. So it can hold seven driver profiles instead of, you know, the old system was like, I'd have a key and you'd have a key. Because of the sharing economy. Right. And we'd, you, you'd get in the car and it would, it would and set oh, your way, seat and everything else. It does have a key. It does. But, but now, you know, you and your six friends, whatever, could each have a driver profile right. and you read your fingerprint and then it would set your seat in the mirrors and the color and the sound and all right. the other things. It has an augmented reality. I'm air quoting augmented reality uh, heads up display. Uh, because in reality, what that does is it really just shows animated arrows of where you should be turning when you have a destination set. So it doesn't, so, it doesn't stick like a bright color on no, the it's, sign. Yeah, no, it doesn't yeah, like yeah. project your destination onto the windshield. There's no or, Pokemon. No, it's literally like instead of just, you know, showing like a static arrow, they kind of like animate the arrows. Um Zero to 60, uh, as tested by car and driver, 3.7, uh, quarter mile and 12.2 at 113 miles an hour. That does beat what Mercedes says it will do. Um, and frankly, I'm glad that they're not playing the, the full-on space dragster game. It's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're bench racing, the Lucid and the Tesla Plaid are both, uh, both quicker. Uh, okay, we will, uh, we will drive now. We will put it in D, right? We will put it in D. We will set it to dynamic mode uh, in full sport. So sport powertrain, sport air suspension, sport steering, and we will use the paddles to toggle strong brake regen. One thing that mildly annoys me about this car is that you have to toggle strong regen on every time you start the car. It doesn't just stay on. Even when you have set your profile, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's and very so, strange. Uh, and then we will also toggle on our uh, massaging driver's seats. Yeah. So to get the best launch, um, you literally, you brake boost it. You left foot brake, right foot gas, and then you dump. And we're gone. And the power gauge goes to 100. <laughs> our gauge it's goes like to the 100. RPM. So the zero to 60, is by EV standards not particularly impressive, although by global all cars ever made standards, this thing is still really quick. Yeah, 3.7, 3.5, whatever. I mean, that's that's supercar speed yeah. uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. It's very, very fast. And it's smooth, and, and more importantly, if you're just, you know, cruising along and you want to squirt a pass, just, you know, it's got that instant, you're there. sharp response, okay? At the other end of it, the brakes, kind of strange very heavy car and the regen is not that strong but more importantly when you set the regen to strong and it activates so you lift off the pedal uh, the accelerator pedal the regen activates it literally physically moves the brake pedal away from you as if it is applying the real brakes it is so the brake pedal is not static the brake pedal moves oh here's the warning look so, interesting warning. Change the steering wheel position so you can see six dots. This main LCD gauge cluster, part of the hyper screen, is positioned too high. I experienced it and Zach experienced it, right? And because it's too high, in order for me to have my seat in a way that is comfortable, and this is a comfortable driving position, and then have my steering wheel 
in a way that is comfortable, it blocks the top half of the screen. Which is where we think driver monitoring systems right. are. Because I actually, when the sun hits it, I can see holes in the screen, sort right. of. And so it's it's unable to detect where your eyes are. So it right. wants you to change how, how you are shaped. So if I change the steering wheel position to where those camera dots are, the steering wheel is now way too high. I mean, it's so far, like, you can't put your wrist on the top I, of the like wheel. Like, I could barely, barely yeah, reach way the top. Too far away. But my hands are up way too high now to drive comfortably. So to actually get the wheel where it's a comfortable position, the top half of the gauge is blocked and the driver monitoring cameras are blocked and you'll continually get, oh wow, it's awfully busy over here. Sure we'll, go, we'll go right so we're not... Uh, so you're going to get that warning more than once. It's going to happen constantly. Well, it's, it's you know? happened every time I've driven the car. Every time I get in the car, it happens. Does it happen more than once on a drive? Mm, yes. Okay. Yeah, it happens like every 20 or 30 minutes on the on the drive. So it's, that is, for a German company, that's an oversight. That they haven't, they haven't made, placed the camera somewhere where it can see you when you've got the wheel where you want it. Especially like, I'm 5'10", you're 6'3", like, we have a pretty big height difference. And I think that covers a lot of the market. So it's, it's surprising they didn't notice that. Well, and I'm tall, and I'm, I have long legs, but I'm not at the extreme edge of the seat either. Right. It's I'm 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 you know, anyway. You get it. It's weird and it blocks the the view. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, with the heads up display and with the lack of a tachometer and stuff like that, I don't need to look at this screen. You know, the heads up tells me pretty much what I need to know yeah. most of the time. Yeah. So it's not a deal breaker if it wasn't giving me warning lights all the time. Now, dynamically, you've got the air suspension. We're in the sportiest setting. I'm a little disappointed with the ride. It's floaty and a little wallowy, and it has more than one movement for every bump. Plus, with the 21 inch wheels. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. It's like Die Hard 3. Yeah, they're. they're 14 moving. great big dump wow, trucks. Somebody had fought. <laughs> yeah, they're moving. <laughs> The they're moving, they're moving all the gold today. Can you have a conversation between Toto and Jeremy Irons? <laughs> yeah, when we're not driving a car, I probably can. <laughs> all right, we'll go, we're going to go that way. All we're doing is avoiding uh, work today. Well, at least work is being done. We're going to go in the funky section. All right, we'll go in the super tight section. Yeah. So the weight in the car is low, and it feels stable through the corners. It's not, like, terrible through the corners, but when you're on a bumpy road, whether it's a highway or the canyon, it's just kind of like, does this sort of like wallow, you know? Well, there's more movement than you'd expect. Like uh, other cars we've driven that have air suspension, Taycan has air suspension, Cross Turismo S has air suspension. Like you don't really notice it except when you're raising the car. And yeah. it's like there's a perfect marriage or harmony between the air spring and the damper. The Rivian was good at this as well. Yeah. But with this, it's kind of like, uh, it just feels oversprung, and the damper is trying to play catch up in controlling that movement. Yeah, and the air suspension not height adjustable, mind you. Right, it only so, adjusts the the softness. It doesn't adjust the height of the car. Well, that makes you wonder why I use it. Because <laughs> yeah. like when you park the car, you have a little pff when the compressor kind of releases its yeah. air. But if you're, it's not height adjustable, why not go with a really good set of springs? Because for example, the Lucid yeah. was on just traditional springs right, and that had, had a better ride. Excellent ride. Yeah, that rode. I'd say softer than this, but also is more composed in the corners. So, sorry about the camera case in the back, folks. The, the brake pedal, even with regen at max, I still need to use a lot of physical brakes, and the pedal is soft, and it doesn't really grab the brakes until you're deep into the pedal. Like, it feels like the weight of the car is overwhelming the actual brakes. Granted, this is a 5,100 mile press car. Who knows how it's spent most of its life. It's possible that these brakes are shot, but the regen is just not that strong, so you can't drive with one pedal, even with it all the way up. And the pedal itself does not inspire a lot of confidence, even if the fact is, if you stomp on it, it will stop the car. It just doesn't make me feel like I've got instant brake response it, like I'd want from a $130,000 car. It feels like your drag chute is too small for the car. It kind of does. <laughs> yeah. Like you're, you're too deep in the pedal. The clamping force is just not slowing you down as quickly as, as I would expect. On the way up here, 
I kept having to go so far into the pedal that with pretty much any other recent modern car, I would have been well stopped by then. Right. So that's, I mean, it's something you would get used to. And if you're not driving a bunch of different cars, you might not even complain about it because it's just sort of luxury car, you know, softness. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll pull over in this driveway so Zach can take over. But... But if you're used to real, you know, German sports sedans and sports cars, it feels like it doesn't have much brakes. It totally does. Yeah. It absolutely does. So trading seats is a good time to talk about these seat adjusters, which <laughs> same position it's been for what, like 20 years? Right. On the door. Little, little seat thing on the door. But it's no longer a mechanical switch. It's like it's a, a capacitive c- button. So you don't really know whether or not it's working unless the seat moves and if you miss it a little bit it like it could change something different it's just you also yeah you don't there's not an obvious indicator of what motion is going to do what on the other hand i'll be good what does i this mean do? on the other hand a positive lots of storage there's tons of storage in the console there's storage under the console there's big door pockets these cup holders are really good very um, solid there's still a glove box too they haven't gotten rid of that the trunk is huge Huge, um, and the hatch opens. The hatch like opens huge seven too. feet. Yeah, you could lean in and you'd be okay. Now I'm in drive minus. Yeah. So let's <laughs> talk about that real quick. So the different levels of they call it recuperation regen, right. but if you go all the way to strong regen, it says D minus, and if you go up to no regen, it's D plus. Yeah, which is the grade I would give the regen. <laughs> now here's something that's interesting about EVs. They're kind of an equalizer. In some ways, like, it makes so much sense that a luxury car would be an EV, right? Smoothness, no totally. torque, no shifting, right? But when a company like Mercedes that is known for making these great smooth engines is doing an EV and so is a company like Ford, mm-hmm. the power delivery is, it's it's the same. It's smooth. There's no vibrations, right? Right. So, you, so in order to make this car that much more refined than say my Ford or a Tesla Model 3 for a third of the price. How do you do it? It's got to be in the ride and the isolation and that kind of stuff, right? So when the ride isn't perfect, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well we've equalized the powertrain, but the ride it doesn't necessarily justify the increase in in price. Right, it's basically like everyone has a straight 8 now. Yeah, you know, yeah. everyone has a twin turbo V12, every company that makes an EV. Yeah. So what are the separators? Well, there's gonna be inside and outside style, tech, and then ride. And, you know, styling is a subjective thing. Um, I think this does does really well in the interior tech. You know, it looks fancy, it looks expensive, it looks futuristic. Right. I like the Taycan better because it seems more traditional and I don't need so much screen. But I don't think anyone who buys this is gonna look at it and think it looks tired or it doesn't look special like it definitely looks special it does but you can get a lot of what this has for less money this big center touchscreen that does a bunch of stuff well you know model 3 has that you know it doesn't have the massage seats you can get massage seats in in audis for 75 80 thousand dollars you know there's 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 really very little in this car that you can't get in lesser cars Right, and granted, this car has a bunch of those things together in one place, um, but it, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, how innovative is it really? Uh, it's yeah, it's not. I mean, it's it's building on a foundation that's existed for right. a while, which is touchscreen and good graphics. It's yeah. just the newest, better version of that. But that's also you could say the same thing for like an Xbox. The newest one, it just looks better sure. and has different games. What I really don't like about this brake pedal is as you said, it moves away from you. It's yeah. like there's a ghost hitting the brakes yeah. for you, but then your foot is chasing the pedal yeah. like a hobo trying to catch a train. Yeah. And what I read is that their 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 goal was that the pedal is in a place where when you finally press it, like any, any amount you push it, it's activating the caliper. But other companies do the same thing without the pedal moving. Yeah. It's almost like they have attached or, or combined the regen with the normal braking system for some reason instead of separating the two switches. And I, I do not like the way it feels. Like it makes me think like the car doesn't actually have regen. It just auto applies the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, which I mean, we know it does, but it's just so weird. It's so weird to chase the pedal. It's an odd choice for sure. And it's, yeah, I don't like that at all. 
Yeah. I don't. I don't like that at it's all. It's a very odd choice. I, I can't. I can't imagine a team of Germans going. You know what would be good? Uh, if the brake pedal was in different place every time. <laughs> like, like, can you possibly imagine a room full of Germans that thought that? Like, we like to keep you guessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll turn. I think. Right. Huh. Turn right. I'll sm- I'll smash it. Yeah. Let's see what the what the go is like. Put your head on the wonderful on this, soft the pillow. The pillow. Yeah. I, it's got a really good pillow. It does. It's nice. It's like a, it's a it's a pillow that only a Toyota Century could really appreciate. All right. Very quick. Hey, look, car. it goes. Yeah, of course it does. And so deep in the pedal. Yeah. yeah. I think I think these pads might just be done. I think someone did some track testing and glazed it. It's, it, it there's no way. I hope it's not supposed to feel that way. I I do too. Because it really feels like it has more power than than more power and more weight than brakes. Yeah, that's that is basically the full pedal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully that's uh, that's the case. You know, seats very comfortable, and then it's kind of nice that you can control so many things over there. Only because remember when Ferrari started with the second screen, right? And you couldn't really do anything. Let me just check. Can I? Uh, well, it's. So, okay, so the best part about this passenger side screen is that the passenger can actually type in an address on the nav while you're moving. So this this has kind of solved that problem of why can't the passenger type an entry into the thing mm-hmm. while you're driving, right? So they've given them their, your own touchscreen keyboard, your own screen over here, and that really makes the uh, the passenger experience an active experience. You can control the radio, you can dial a phone number, you can use the apps, you can change all the massage uh, seats. You, the passenger can do anything the driver can do, and you can do a bunch of it while you're moving, mm-hmm. which is stuff that you can't do you know, from the driver's screen. So that is safe and useful. It's smart, yeah. Yeah, like if... if, if you know, this would be a great car, like for like a you know like a like a gumball kind of situation where you want you want to be able to type in stuff on the fly, and you want the passenger to like really have something active to do. Yeah, because something we complain about before is the the cars can't tell there's a passenger in the seat, even though the airbag can. Yeah. But then when you go to type in a new address, it says come to a stop. It's right. like, well, why can't you do it? The yeah. car knows there's somebody there. So now so it, this, it has that. Yeah, so that's good. So, okay, to get to the point, is this the electric S-Class? In some ways, but not not in terms of ride Mm-mm. or rear seat room. Yeah. It's a little tight in the back, yeah. which an S-Class did not have that problem. Um, I think so it's no. an electric CLS class. You know, it, the body really looks like a CLS, True. except with a few inches of battery pack in the floor, so it's a little taller. Um, the, the, the space more resembles a slightly lengthened CLS than it does an actual S-Class, which is bigger. Yeah. Um, and the ride isn't as refined or advanced as an S-Class. And so I, I, if what they're pitching was an electric S-Class, I would just rather have an electric S-Class. Yeah. Um, where does it compare in the, uh, in the world of six-figure EV sedan. So you've got a Tesla Plaid, you've got a Lucid Air, you've got a Taycan, e-tron GT, and this. Well, I, th- I mean, I think the interior is the prettiest, most expensive looking out of those. Whether or not you think it's useful or not, yeah. I do think it is the nicest looking one. Um, I like the Lucid looks really cool, but the good thing about this is it comes from a really established brand. Right. Where, whereas the, you know the the upstarts don't have that. Right. So and also I guess Rivian to a certain extent as well, even though it's a pickup truck for the mm-hmm. time being. But you have to you, you know it. We can't pretend like people don't not want to buy a car from a startup, right? Yes. And we also can't pretend like it doesn't take two years from today to get a Lucid or two years to get a Rivian. You could buy a Tesla today and it'll come in two months or whatever. Um, And Tycons, it's going to take a long time to get one of those right now. E-trons, I think you can get more uh, easily. Um, My my favorite is still, for the money, the, the Tycon because it's the most driver's oriented car yes it's the most communicative it feels the most like a sports car but it can also be a very comfortable luxury car the the back seat space isn't that important if i was really doing 
t- a touring with like four people, I'd probably rather have the lucid air, which was in a, really yeah, spacious. In a vacuum where like I'm not worried about service centers, dealership, right? You know, startup versus established. I think the Lucid for sure. It has more space. It has a frunk, which this right. doesn't because it has this giant cabin filter that's up there. Um, I don't need that. Like, I'm happy to smell a cow once in, in a yeah. while to have a frunk. It is the Mercedes of EVs. Um, but at the same time, Mercedes has usually thought things through so well that there's some really strange oversights in this one. And I think maybe they need, we need to wait a couple generations for them to fix that stuff. Like... That gauge being where it is and me not being able to see it, like, that's very strange. Yeah, it is. It's really high up the dashboard. There's so much room above the steering wheel. Yeah. Like, it seems like, why couldn't they drop that down a little bit? Yeah, I, I, it's, hmm. it, that's a very strange one. So, so there is some stuff in this car that doesn't really jive with me. Although, if it fits you physically and if it fits your driving habits, it's pretty cool. And people yep. on the street like it. It's got a lot of curb appeal. People were coming up to me and going, man, that thing is great. It looks like a concept car. That'll wear off eventually once we yeah. start seeing a lot of them. But um, It doesn't look as good as the EQS concept car because right. that was a very good looking car. Right. Well, no, but, no, no production car ever does. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you to Mercedes for uh, letting us have a go for a week. Thank you to you guys for watching. We appreciate you uh, keeping up with us. And this is a little bit longer than normal video, but there's a lot to talk about. And we'll see you later. And remember... Always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.